and welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube who's watching this video later on over there for some Dread Hordes Climb. This deck looks pretty sweet. Uh, this was Jay Z's deck uh, that played against me whenever we did the sub battle stream on Saturday, and it looked really awesome playing against it. And so we're going to try it out for ourselves here. And really, what we have here is we are combining the amass mechanic with Dread Horde Invasion where you amass one token <clears throat> and you know put a bunch of counters on it each turn with Hidana's Climb they can also put the counter on the amass token uh, and then you can make your like yeah so like that that's uh, something that can happen and then uh, you get to flip your Hidana's Climb and one one like problem with the Dreadhorde Invasion is and just amass in general is that if you like amass a big army um your opponent can just like chump block your army, right? Each turn. Well, if you amass a big army and then you have the Winged Temple of Arazka, where you get to double the creature's power and give it flying, that kills people very, very quickly. We also have the Gleaming Overseer to give that army hexproof and give it menace as well to help give it some more evasion there. And that's kind of our deck. It looks really sweet. So, of course, Growth Chamber Guardian and Incubation Druid are two cards that work really, really well with Hadana's Climb also. Um, you know, Hadana's Climb putting counters on these so that you get the uh, add the additional effects that they gain. Uh, you know, with Incubation Druid, you start adding a ton of mana, which means we need these Hydro Crises with all that mana. And yeah, this deck looks really sweet. Let's give it a try. I am really excited about the magic netflix series can't wait for that to come out obviously it should be i, I don't know if they set any dates but it's probably going to be you know far in the future but I, I can't wait for it that looks looks really awesome and yeah i'm definitely looking forward to that I I assume it's going to be about lore stuff, not not necessarily the game, but like storyline stuff. You know, like with all the the planeswalkers, uh, you know, maybe like fighting Bolas or whatever they're doing. Um, I assume that's what it's going to be about. Yeah, London Mulligan rule. We were talking about that. We had like a longer, a little bit longer conversation about that during the Golgari Walkers uh, video from earlier today, but. Basically, I I think, okay, so I haven't played with London Mulligan Rule at all, so I don't have, you know, it's just kind of like theory-wise, but I think I'm going to enjoy it more than the current Mulligan Rule, but I don't necessarily think it's the best Mulligan Rule. I was hoping that, that a Mulligan Rule that would be implemented that's kind of halfway between the current one and the London Mulligan rule. Right now, uh, right now, um, we have a rule that you look at seven if you don't like it, you look at six and then scry one. And if you don't like that, you look at five and then scry one. Or any more mana. Yeah. The London Mulligan rule is you look at seven. If you don't like it, you look at seven, and then you put one on the bottom. If you don't like that, you look at seven, and then you put two on the bottom. So you always look at seven. I was, I was hoping... So basically, my concern with that is that, is that we're going to end up having just a lot of games that are the same or very very similar and it's going to kind of take apart one of the one of the, my favorite aspects of magic and that is playing just playing different games and and having uh, a brand new game all the time which makes the replayability uh so high in magic Spell Pierce? Oh, come on. 
Well, we are likely dead. They can just activate Growth Chamber Guardian and then climb the Growth Chamber Guardian. Yep. Yep, we got Spell Pierced. And so I'm just concerned that that like magic may that it may not be as interesting if like all the games play out the same or just like really similar because you get to see seven cards all the time and just kind of curve out the same ways in a lot of the games. Um, the, what I wanted honestly implemented was just, like I said, like halfway between those two rules where you would look at seven. If you don't like it, you look at seven again and put one on the bottom, just like the, the, the London Mulligan rule is. But then with five cards, instead of looking at seven and putting two cards back, you would look at six and put one card back. So it's kind of like you look at the extra card that you would have been scrying, you basically get to have that extra card that you'd be scrying the whole time in your hand. Um, and then instead of scrying one, you just put one on one on the bottom. That was personally the rule that I was hoping for. But with that being said, I can't say that I'm disappointed with having the London Mulligan rule, because like I said, I, I think I will like that more than the current rule. I don't really want to play Brontodon just to try to kill Hadana's Climb. I think I just want to try to get to a faster start and everything. I don't really know if there's anything that I want to sideboard, honestly. I mean, I could see taking out Enter the God Eternals, I guess, for like Moment of Cravings, just to try to make things faster. Maybe like Duresses, maybe? I don't think so though on the play. I think I just want to keep this like this, honestly. Like we have we have the Tyrant Scorns, you know, like we have early removal. <laughs> you got double shalai? Nice. Yeah, double shalai is is crazy. That spark double card has just been really impressive in the Ban Arcbo deck. I'm honestly not sure if I'm supposed to, like which way I'm going which way I'm supposed to be going here with Growth Chamber Guardian or or Dreadhorde Invasion. This flips the climb a little faster. So casting this second main, of course, because we, we needed to be able to flip the Winged Temple of Araska first. But now we have this 8-8 eight, eight out here and a lot of mana, and they're at 16. And this can be <laughs> this can be a 16-16 16, 16 flyer the next turn. I mean, we'll seven, I guess we would have amassed one, so it could be an 18-18 18, 18 flyer the next turn. All right, now we're going to be on the draw. We saw Frilled Mystic, Vivian. On the draw, I'm, I'm much less... I, I don't want Enter the God Eternals as much on the draw. But I do still want Interaction. Hmm. I don't really want Moment of Craving, though. I guess it's just like Duress instead? I, I don't really want Brontodon for their climb. 
it's just it's hard to actually it's hard to actually kill a climb with a bronze on because a lot of times you can play climb and flip immediately kind of thing this is jay-z wands deck Hmm. Alright. I am playing Moment of Craving. I'm playing Moment of Craving over Contempt. That's how I'm going to reduce the mana. I want to keep this... I want to keep the Enter the God Eternals. The Amass is just so good. But that's how I'm going to kind of make my deck cost a little less. I'm going to try Moment of Craving instead of... Contempt. Because we know they have Growth Chamber Guardian. We saw Biomancer's Familiar, which likely means they have Incubation Druid as well. With all that adapting stuff. Uh, Frilled Mystic can get to Moment of Craving also. Everything that we've seen from them can, can die to Moment of Craving. Yuck. Well, thankfully they mulliganed very quickly as well. So we need to find Black Mana. Not a black card. <laughs> yeah, we are. We have the amass token uh, avatar here, or like the the zombie horde avatar. So do I try to play around Spell Pierce and not play Hedonis Climb right now? Man, drawing Growth Chamber Guardian 2 and Growth Chamber Guardian 3 is not ideal, but I mean, my opponent's on one land, so I can't complain too much. Let's just go Growth Chamber Guardians. Attack. Um I did I did really well to start with with the Simic Popper deck. The last time I played some Popper I wasn't doing too well with the deck, but I I still liked it. It's it's. I'm gonna keep playing that deck because I I like it. It's just it's a fun deck to play. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going aggro. I'm playing around counter magic. Getting these beats in with these 4-4s. Four While well, playing around, like, spell pierces and negates and things like that. Well, this is game three, so saying, like, don't show climb, like, this is game three. Like this game's for the match. I was basically just waiting for them to tap out. Whenever they tap out, I just play the the Hadana's climb, put a counter on like one of the four fours, flip the climb, and kill them. All right, one to know. I mean, we both kept one landers there, but I drew a second land and I had mana creatures. They did not draw a second land and did not have mana creatures. Hmm. 
But I also, we both molded a 6 and kept a 1 lander. Alright, perfect mana. These Dreadhorde sleeves are sweet. Oh yeah, definitely playing Dread uh, Incubation Druid first. Definitely. Definitely going Incubation Druid first. Well... Okay, maybe not. Like, if this is a blue-black control deck, they may not have enchantment removal. And they may just be sitting on, like, Doomblade... Or, you know, like a Tyrant Scorn or whatever. Alright, this could be bad for me. I had to go to combat first. See if they wanted to kill my 1-1 one -one before... Second main. Uh, the second one, no fox. Um, well, let's bounce this thing. Where's our lands at? Come on, deck. Thing about putting together a paper standard deck to play at FNM and such during the summer. How do you feel about Grixis control these days? Haven't haven't been as impressed with it recently. It's just it's kind of like you know not having enchantment removal is definitely difficult. Like you know like that is problematic. Bounce your Kefnet, that's my play for the rest of the game. But for FNM, yeah, that's that's definitely good. Yeah, it's good enough for FNM for sure. Get rid of the Kefnet. Boo. So they were sitting on that Tyrant Scorn earlier. We were talking about the Tyrant Scorn. I wonder if this is just my Kefnet control deck. That's what it looks like. Kefnet control's cool. Oh, you think oh I should have just entered the God Eternal on my own thing and just milled the Kefnet? Yeah, I guess I could have done that. Yeah, I guess I should have done that, shouldn't I? Yeah, that that's a good call. I didn't really I didn't really even think of that. But yeah, I should have done that. Because if you if you deal the damage to your own creature, it does just get bigger. So that would have that would have worked for me. Hmm. That's unfortunate. That's really unfortunate for me.
Mm. I guess we target the cap net. Please, no more removal. I need my lifelink 8-8. Well, that... <laughs> that, uh... That, that not playing the Enter the God Eternals, that other turn to get rid of the Kefnet, looks like it's going to cost me this game. Need to do that. I just didn't see that line at the time. That's too hard to say, Jay Corbus, of like what the mulligan rule will change in modern and everything. It's it's honestly too hard to say. We just kind of have to see, just kind of play it out and see what happens. It does seem like the game is going to be, or like the, Modern's already just like a format that's all about the, like, drawing sideboard cards, and it seems like drawing sideboard cards is just going to be an even bigger part of Modern now. I'd say that's, that's like the one thing. Like, that would be my first thing, is that sideboard cards will be more prevalent. Alright, then attacking for five, and then I'm dead to these invasions at upkeep. Yeah, this looks, this looks just like my... Kefnet control deck. So that's pretty cool. Kefnet's a problem. <laughs> so if we take out Tyrant's Corn and play Duress. And take out Enter the God Eternals and play Negate. I mean, I could play Brontodons to blow up Immortal Sun. I'm trying to kill them before that. Oh, that's a that's a good question, gang. Thought Erasure would be... I mean, Thought Erasure is just a, an incredible card. But maybe Thought Erasure instead of Duress, maybe? No, Thought Erasure is just awesome. I don't. I wouldn't say that my opponent probably had another Kefnet in hand if I milled it, because like they went down to like having just like one card in hand, like a little later. Like maybe that one card was that, but dinos are dead. No, don't kill the dinos. All right, Joy, if I got you down for last on Saturday. Thanks for that donation deck there, Joyf. <laughs> what's the what's your source for most people like cats? I would say common sense. That's a good source for most people like cats, because what why would you not like cats? Cats are cool. Right, okay. <laughs> That's not a source. <laughs> that was a bold strategy, not playing a second land. All right, now there's the second land.
All right, Winged Temple is flipped. <laughs> I did not, Pittsburgh. I did not. So that sounds like a a good time. Uh, dinos are retired. No. Okay, the dinos are retired. No more dinos. They went extinct. 518 elk. Well, that means that you won't die to one ones anymore. Or like a single one one. They'll draw their deck before it can kill you. I don't know what the most life I've had on Arena. I don't think I've ever had 518 life on Arena. This is an awkward hand. Like when we're casting stuff. I think I'm going Drown Catacomb turn one. And then Land War Elf plus Duress on turn two. The third Hadana's Climb. Isn't exactly ideal. Alright, well, they don't have a counter spell, so I guess I should just play this invasion now. And get this in play, because. Again, our. Uh, you know, blue black just doesn't have an answer to invasion be besides dispersal. Net. So they slam Kefnet, I play Gleaming Overseer. Proof. I should just let them pick. Which one you want? All right, Hawkeye, which one do you want? Left, middle, or right? Middle? All right. We'll do middle. <laughs> We're climbing. Can we get the land drop here? Come on, land drop. Ugh, not land drop. Because land drop would mean we'd get to activate Hadana's Climb here after flipping it. Which would not have killed them, but would have definitely made my my token Hexproof, or sorry, Lifelink. I think they're still pretty dead here, though. Yes, yeah, so they got to contempt that. And now, do they have a, a two mana removal for for this thing? Or are they just gonna have to chump block it? Well, little do they know, I can give it menace again. I mean, I don't. It's not game. They can draw a ritual set. So maybe I should have let them. I guess I should have just let them. Chump block. 
and hold the Gleaming Overseer. The problem with holding cards against... I don't really like holding cards against the blue-black deck, though. <laughs> yeah, Hawkeye okay, loves the head scratches. Yeah, this game's not over. I can just hit Ritual Set. Yeah, the Planeswalkers certainly... Yeah, the Planeswalkers kind of killed Gates. So like Narset. So you can't draw lots of cards. All right, we'll Kefnet down. And they're at one. So I just gotta get one more point in here. Yeah, they did say the, the good game earlier. They're not dead. So ritual set resets this. Yeah, the, the GG and then continue to play is a little annoying. Yeah, I think our yeah, I do think my opponent thought that I had the mana for climb. I think that was the thing. So I think they thought I had mana for climb, but I didn't have mana for climb. Well, now they're dead. I guess if they hit moment of craving. Cool game. If they hit land a moment of craving. I forgot to say no tomatoes with that Twitch Prime sub. Thank you so much. I forgot to say no tomatoes. We are 2-0 here with Dreadhorde's Climb. I haven't reset Arena at all today. I guess I should. Uh, it's too late now. We've been on for close to six hours now, and I hadn't reset it at all. All right, bye, Hawkeye. Back up to me. Mm. <laughs> yeah, just gotta get rid of that. No blue mana. There's blue mana. Don't. So if I growth chamber guardian. Now nah, we'll go druid. Next turn double guardian.
<laughs> his character count. Mm -hmm. The standard dredge deck is a ton of fun. I think the the cyborg could still use a little work, uh, especially with like the removal spells of of like trying to figure out like Beasts, getting a, a good plan against aggro. But and end. I think it's pretty good against control, and it's a whole lot of fun to play. And yeah, I like it. I'll, I'll be playing it probably on Wednesday again, I think. Still walk away. You can still walk away. You can still leave champion walk away. a new beginning. Carnage Tyrant. That thing's big. Interesting attack. I'm gonna just play some defense for a little bit and um, how this thing goes is up to you. Activate these growth chamber guardians here. Strike now, strike hard. Who put swamps in the dredge sideboard to help cast it? Hmm. That's interesting. Maybe. No, probably not. Well, well, maybe actually. Honestly, maybe if you go like a higher density of of black spells, like with some some other black removal. Yeah, I could see that. attack All right, down to 14. Yeah, 
yeah, I play aggro sometimes. Yeah, I play. I kind of play just everything, Renan. Um, aggro is not so like basically mono red is like the good aggro deck of the format. Like mono white's okay, but that's kind of about it. Like the other aggro decks, there's not really other aggro decks too much. Um, but like the the Naya Feather deck that I like playing, I would certainly call that an aggro deck. They're just suiciding in a a Carnage Tyrant. Just suiciding in a Carnage Tyrant. Nope. No Carnage Tyrant. Because, of course, this is an 8-12 when it's blocking. Man, these creatures are big. What? What? Well, I couldn't really make that block and stay alive. They were just in a really tough spot. It's like the the strength of Winged Temple of Araska. You know, like we just had all we had was like a Growth Chamber Guardian, an Incubation Druid, and a Hadana's Climb, and we used those to like beat all of those cards our opponent played. That was it was basically just like those three. Alright, don't need any of these. Our deck's great. Do they have any good blocks? No. I mean, they would have. They had to chump block with like their elves and stuff like that. They had to like chump block with two elves, at least, and then put put Carnage Tyrant and the two two. Both of those, or like Carnage Tyrant and one elf, like either one, like double block of a four four. No, that their blocks were tough. Hey, Azur, continuing that gifted sub. Thanks, Azur. Glad you've been enjoying the emotes and everything, and thanks for that continued support. We'll mark that down on towards today's sub goal. <laughs> thanks, Azur. Azur. Azor. Nope, no blocks. You got me. We do need more mana. This doesn't seem like the best matchup for Dreadhorde Invasion, but I guess I guess we we do like we could reliably turn Dreadhorde Invasion into um
could pretty reliably turn um, the Dreadhorde invasion into getting the life link with by pumping it with the Hadana's climb. So please don't kill my incubation druid. So I get to play a big Krasis. Good. So we have three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we have Krasis for six. Krasis for seven. Now Collision Colossus. The collision doesn't kill the Krasis if they had Collision Colossus. That is one big old jellyfish. Oh. So this should be lethal. Can I undo that? No, I can't. Dang it. I need to add blue. Crap. I mess this up. I need to add blue with Incubation Druid, because these are all green. I needed to do blue. And then I was going to play the new climb, flip the climb, and, and activate it again. <laughs> I needed to do blue. Oh, well. They, they scooped it up. Um, I think... So I was just looking at it. I think I just had lethal anyway of just not not flipping the other climb of just or like just playing playing the new climb, making it fifteen, and then just attacking with the elves. At least no, because they had two blockers. I need a uh, blue. All right. Good hand. What am I doing on turn two? We'll have to see what our opponent does, whether I want to invasion or druid. With me not having anything really to ramp into, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to be invasioning here right away on turn two. Yeah, I think I just had 16 damage there, and they were at 17. All right, following up with the climb, that's a good thing to follow up with here. Yeah, mono red's going to be a little rough for us. <laughs> um, honestly, Hadana's climb is really good. I don't really like it's not it's not that the card by itself is too weak. Honestly, it's it's a really solid card. It It's in a color combination of blue and green that has a lot of good other options and like for for playing like uh Really, like it's it's kind of an aggressive card, and and in a bad color combination for being an aggressive card, I guess. Like, like blue green doesn't really have removal, needs another needs a third color. I don't know. It's it's a really good card. It's just there's also a lot of good other blue green cards also that like people usually play in blue green decks, you know, like mass manipulation and stuff like that. It just kind of usually gets gets left out of a lot of other people. Stucks. Yeah, I, I can get the lifelink next turn if if my 2-2 two -two doesn't die here. We'll have the lifelink next turn, but, you know, we'll see if they want to kill the 2-2 two -two or not. They did. But if they would have played, like, a Chain Whirler that turn... 
Like we would have been attacking. We would have been attacking for eight the, the next turn. Lifelink. I was hoping they would have just played like a. I guess a chain whirler could have teamed up with the firebrand. They basically have to kill this token every single turn if they ever let me attack with it. Okay, that's it's card for me to Tyrant Scorn. Way to go, Daffy. 16th place at the M at your first MCQ yesterday. That is awesome. That's a definitely is a good result. Good job. All right, they're just down to two cards. Well, you did your job, Incubation Druid. Okay, are they going to kill my 1-1? One -one? Dang. Alright, 1-1 one, one down. All right, so I'm I'm putting the counter on the Dread Horde invasion here, so that like they don't really have good attacks with the Chain Whirler. Basically, even if this Growth Chamber Guardian would die, we would still have um, two three threes to be able to block, and even like you know with first strike would kill one, but then the other would kill the Chain Whirler. All right, 1010 10 lifelinker. 1010 10 flying lifelinker is usually pretty good. All right, now do they have enough burn with this frenzy to kill a 5-5, five, five, a 4-4, four, four, and a 3-3? Three, three? Gotta kill them all. Hey, right, Vale. Better late than never. Hope you're having a good start to the week today here with Monday. Hey, Koala Bear. Getting that resub in. Sub number 15. Thank you kindly. All right, well, they killed the 5-5. Five five. Now they got to kill a 4-4 four, four and a 3-3 three, three with 2 mana. It's not going to be easy. 
Uh, no, no plans on doing anything with Modern Horizons. There's the deck list also right there for that question. So I want these Brontodons in here to help out. Am I cutting Lana War Elf? Can we do just fine if we cut Lana War Elf? Play a Duress and Brontodons. Am I actually supposed to cut Invasion? That lifelink is pretty sweet. Jay Z, you've played this deck a lot more than me. What do you what do you do? What do you like doing in this matchup? Oh right, moment of craving. I guess that's a card that's in my sideboard, so I should probably play it. Hmm. I mean, it it, it kind of does seem like I'm supposed to be cutting Dreadhorde Invasion. <laughs> okay, you're not sure what goes out against Burn? Like, Dreadhorde Invasion is basically only going to be good if we have Hadana's Climb to go with it. And climb's only gonna be good if if you have Dreadhorde Invasion. Ah, Gleaming Overseer is good too. I guess I'm gonna cut one invasion. I think I'd rather have if I had to choose one or the other to have, I would rather have the Hadana's climb, because it can do some stuff with the other cards than have the invasion. No, 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 you, you cannot, this, you cannot take out Contempt in this matchup. Gotta have Contempt in here. It is very good. You know, we gotta, like, get rid of Chandra. Maybe they have Rekindling Phoenix to get rid of. Um, if they have, like, Tybalt, you want to Contempt that thing. Or Contempting Chain Whirler or Steamkin. Uh, like two cards that may not die to Moment of Craving. Hmm. So I was planning on craving this Pyromancer, but drawing the Overseer... Made me switch the plan up. So I'm going to go Invasion to start amassing. That's a really good draw. Another one. Another one. Gotta get this thing up to being a 6-6. Six, six. <clears throat> yeah, that's why we need Contempt. Because of that card. So that's three. Hmm. I guess we need a race. So I'm getting rid of like their other blockers. They can't double block my 3-3 here. It's just, we're just going to be one short next turn from the 6. Because you know we'll get f the 4th from Invasion, the 5th here. Oh, 
No. Bleh. No. We gotta reset. Reset the offense. We'll draw that contempt. It's not a contempt. So, I get attacked down to seven, and then I lose two life to go to five, and then I get attacked down to one, and then I lose two life and I die. So no, I cannot, I cannot play this. All right, well, yep. Looks like I need to play the Overseer the previous turn. Uh, I got punished with like the, the double Lava Coil there <clears throat> from not playing the other Overseer. And instead going for like the racing plan. Got very punished for that. So we need to draw Hedonis Climb basically. We're, we're Hedonis Climb or Bust right now. Or, or Contempt. Climb or Contempt. Those are like our only things that help us right now. Yeah, we can, we can do it if we draw Climb or Contempt. Or Enter the God Eternals? Yes, Enter the God Eternals also. Any of those. Climb, Contempt, God Eternals. That's none of those. Well, if they brick, we'll have one more draw. That's not exactly a brick. All right, same thing. We're really climb or enter the God Eternals now. Dang. I kept in four climb and three Dreadhorde invasion, and we drew all three Dreadhorde invasions and zero climbs. Bleh. Bleh, I say. Yeah, I, I could see, I could definitely see playing, like, instead of Moment of Cravings in the sideboard, maybe we should just have more Enter the God Eternals, honestly. Yeah, like, this this feels like we should just have four Enter the God Eternals in our deck. Right? Like, yeah. Uh, this was Jay-Z Wan's deck. It is really, this is a really cool deck. Yeah, we already have the, the Tyrant's Corns. Yeah, you, we really don't need Moment of Craving in here. Into the God Eternals, that's where it's at. Mm -hmm. 
I don't think I'm going to shock next turn. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to Tyrant score next turn. Yeah. We can't shock too much, but I think shocking there makes sense because that, that allows us to get this going. And doing that now before they untap and be able to have Wizard's Lightning uh, cost one mana. No, Enter the God Eternals is going to be a lot better than the Vitsugazi card. Because we need to gain the life um, that it does. And then we also need we need it to grow the Dreadhorde Invasion for lifelink and everything like that. Wow. I will take that. I will take that. That's a good trade. Hold this one four back in case haste creatures. Yeah, let's hold the one four back. I, I don't I know. I have a tyrant scorn. No, I guess I should have just attacked. I can tyrant scorn. Alrighty, Shikawa. Go and get that sleep in. Yeah, put that Phoenix back in your hand. That's pretty nice with Frenzy out, just two mana removal for Phoenix. All right, the good old flying 10-10 lifelinker. Do you Dreadhorde Invasion plus Hadana's Climb? Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet combo here. So it's just a 12-12 a flying... Hexproof, Menace, Lifelink. So many keywords. Hexproof, Menace, Flying, Lifelink. So many keywords. <laughs> yeah, this is a pretty aggro mid-range deck. Yeah, I'd say that. All right, we are 4 and 0. Oh. Let's get our final boss playlist up. Final boss time. And yeah, it's been it's been over six hours of us streaming here and we haven't reset. I'm gonna do a reset too here before the final boss. Final boss. All right, question. What do you think is the best deck for farming constructed arena best of one? Yes, mono red, it is. Um, if you don't want to play mono red, then I would say Esper Acuity. Um, yeah, like basically Esper Lifelink, uh, or like a bunch of life gain stuff, a bunch of instants. Um, Esper, Esper Anti Mono Red, basically, and best of one. Can this deck function without the Hydras? Yeah, probably can. So you would want to do because yeah, if you if you don't want to to spend the money for the Hydras for paper. Um, you you would certainly want all four Enter the God Eternals main. You'd you'd replace two of them with two Enter the God Eternals, and the other two you could play. What would you want? Is there anything good big mana wise that we'd want to replace it with? 
maybe... Uh, I mean, you could just have, like, some kind of Planeswalker. Like, maybe... Uh, like, Nissa's. Like, yeah, like, maybe just have a couple Nissa's. Good old turn one duress. All right, we got Esper Hero as our final boss here. Definitely considering discarding the Tyrant Scorn. I'm glad I discarded the land, though, now. I may end up Tyrant Scorning that, that Krasis and, and getting a new Krasis. See, I didn't play the Growth Chamber Guardian last turn because I really wanted to be able to have like the five mana play Growth Chamber Guardian and, at, and activate it. All right, so they got three cards. It's kind of interesting that both of their creatures had enter the battlefield, I discard a card, and all three of my creatures had, you know, basically enter the battlefield, I draw a card. So like basically all three of these had, like my creatures say I draw, their creatures say I discard. That's pretty cool. So I'm going to trade a Growth Chamber Guardian for a Bell Haunt, just one for one here, because then it makes like it makes the other Growth Chamber Guardian attack well. And honestly, I probably should have just done this last turn. So I could I could bounce I could bounce the bell haunt, but then I have to discard a card. Do they have a veto? No. Yeah, I can just discard this this land here. Discarding lands isn't always ideal whenever you're playing Hydro Crisis, though. I wish I would have activated that Growth Chamber Guardian and shuffled it, shuffled it up. I don't want those cards. Um, um, um. 
Attack! We have 12 coming in here, putting them down to four. That's my last growth chamber guardian, right? No, one, two, yeah, one, two, three, four. Yeah, it is, so yeah, we'll play this one. I forgot what your deck you were playing until the overseer draw. Yeah, we could definitely surprise our opponent here, right? Like they didn't see any, they didn't see any of our our uh, amass tricks or anything. You know, we we drew zero dreadhorde invasion or climbs or overseers. That whole you know, well, we just drew that overseer. But we didn't play it or enter the god eternals. You know, so certainly surprise our opponent here. All right, against Esper. Hero, they usually play a whole lot of planeswalkers, especially after board. I want Immortal Suns here and Elder Spells also. Yeah, I think I want those, and I'm just gonna take out Scorns and just hope they don't have Hero of Precinct one. I guess I could take out Enter the God Eternals and play two Scorn. No, let's play a couple of Duress actually. Let's just do that. I'm just going to hope they don't have, like, their four, you know, Hero Precinct ones. Because even if they do, we can go over the top. You know, we can fly over it with, like, Adonis Climb. Should I just play all... Yeah, maybe just play all Duresses, no Elder Spells. I like that. We'll just go four Duress and have these Immortal Suns in there. Yeah, our opponent's a Hero, uh, hero Precinct one deck. The only Esper deck that plays Basilica Bell Hunt plays Hero Precinct 1 also. It's possible they sideboard out Hero Precinct 1 also, though. You just never, you know, you never know. Um, especially with me having just a bunch of creatures. Maybe they just sideboard it out and just try to go, like, really control heavy. Not really a very good hand, but it's better than a five card hand, I suppose. Yeah, this is part of our, our uh, final boss playlist. Um, I'd have to, I'd have to look, I'd have to look Steve Ox, um, So, like, maybe something like this. I, I don't know if that... Oh, I have to go over here. Uh, basically, just Google search Esper Acuity Best of One. For the Best of One deck there.
I have reached my limit. Do I cycle Krasis? Yeah. Attack. And this is where Growth Chamber Guardians really earning its money. Being a, a five mana four four that replaces itself. Well, Master Shaker is a good one, but Girl Chamber Guardian is a little better. You can just keep on getting more of them. So that's my third growth chamber guardian. Yeah, there's three out here. So my one growth chamber guardian Got hostage takered and got mortified, and I still have a 4 4 in play, and it's still in my hand. That first growth chamber guardian got me all of this. Unfortunately, the Leon Dreadhorde General here. is kind of messed up. All right, come on, Immortal Sun. <laughs> immortal <Rise>. Sun, <laughs> won't you come? And be my draw step. It's on top. I can feel it. Immortal sun. Hold that thought. Mindless minion. Alright, we could really use Immortal Sun now. I think even more than a little bit ago. Should have shuffled, it wasn't on top. but effective keep up the pace all right we need you son go 
Good game. More lands. I'm going to turn one climb and one land war elf. Get these negates in here. Land war elves are not good late game draws at all. So I'm going to take one out. And if they are playing sweepers, of course, land war elves just always die to the sweepers. We have just tons and tons of twos in our deck also. So it's not really like ramping. Like ramping into Land of is really even that important. Ugh. Dang it, they have the heroes this time. Well, I guess I guess I leave them with Kaya's Wrath. So if they want a Kaya's Wrath, oh, so they are not even. Not even playing the heroes. What are they doing now? They don't. Even have, they want to have like the double black. Or like the double white, sorry, the double white. Jump blocking with Hero of Precinct 1. Come on, deck. Can we just draw a Krasis? Draw a crisis, Hawkeye. <laughs> I don't think Narset letting them uh, impulse a couple of times is a good idea.
All right, and now if they use the Kai's Wrath here, they're not using the Kai's Wrath because, yeah, Dovin's Veto, of course, is a card that I'm worried about with the Immortal Sun. And so I was hoping they would tap both of their white sources. All right, no more white sources. Ooh, no Dovin's Veto anyway. All right, Mortal Sun time. Boom. That is a victory on the final boss. Here we go. 5-0. and oh. Great way to finish out the stream tonight. Let's mark that down, Hawkeye. 5 and 0. Oh. Mark that down over here. Whoa, not 54 and 0. Oh. That'd be pretty good. That was pretty awesome. Dreadhorde's Climb. Our opponent really... I don't think they played that last game very well. I think they kind of threw away a lot of creatures they didn't need to. <clears throat> You're welcome, Jay-Z Wan. Thank you so much for the um, the fun deck here. Yeah, this deck was awesome. Uh, I think the only thing that I, that I really wanted to change um, as we were talking about was have more Enter the God Eternals in the sideboard for Mono Red instead of the Moment of Cravings. I think that's the only thing I really want, I really would like to change with the deck. Um, if I, you know, playing it again. I definitely liked the main deck. Main deck was sweet. But Enter the God Eternals is just so, so clutch against Mono Red. And it just works so well with Dreadhorde Invasion. I think, I think we'd like, in order to like make Dreadhorde Invasion the best, I think that we really need those Enter the God Eternals. Um, so the thing about Thought Erasure, instead of Duress, is it does take a blue and a black in the two mana. Maybe Thought Erasure instead of Duress. Hmm. It is a pretty great card. It was, uh, Matthias. Dress does its thing at one mana. But, sur I mean, this card's kind of messed up. One mana is really nice, but Surveil 1 is also really, really nice of helping you hit land drops or f helping you find your Krasis. You know, because you're bringing in Thought Erasures against the slow decks, right? Like your slow control decks. Surveil 1 is pretty busted. And taking anything, taking Lyra Dawnbringers, anything like that. It's, I mean, it's probably better, to be honest. It does, yeah, I mean, it, it competes with all of our other two drops. You know, like, we have Invasions, Druids. That's that's the tough thing, is, like, our, our whole deck are, like, two drops. One mana is really nice. I don't know. I could, I could see it either way, honestly. I could see Thought Erasure or Duress. Thought Erasure is pretty great, though. <laughs> yeah, Krasis is a six drop. Basically, it would like it would replace Tyrant Scorn. You know, like we would take out Tyrant Scorn and replace it with Thought Erasure. Like that's that's like that that sideboarding part there, and then Enter the God Eternals leaves, and you bring in a Mortal Sun. Like that's like you're against control decks. Like that's what happens. I don't know. Yeah, Jay Z one, give give that a try. The, the Thought Erasures. Let me know. Card's so good. It's like, this is a lot better card to draw later on in the game. Like, in your opening hand, you probably want Duress, like that one mana, like Duress. But basically, like, turn four or later in the game, you want, like, the Thought Erasure because you want the Surveil at that point. Um, and, you know, like, drawing it later on, it's definitely going to be better. Uh, Duress does a better job at protecting a mortal sun. That's a good point. Yeah, that's true with just being one mana instead of six. 
But that's that's the thing is like later on in the game like that we we do you can't have a, a good amount of mana with incubation druid how you get to adapt incubation druid and also put counters on it with adonis climb and everything hmm I don't know. I, I could see either one. Like whichever whichever one whichever one you like. I, I like them both. I like Thought Razor and I like Duress. Um. Yeah, you know, I like them both. Kind of whichever one you want. <clears throat> yeah, and you could you could also peel like a hostage taker. That's true with your Thought Razor, or like if there's like suddenly like a Lyra Dawnbringer in like an Esper control deck. You know, you want to take that Lyra Dawnbringer kind of thing. Who knows? Um, all right. So if you're watching this video later on in YouTube, I hope you enjoyed it. Please hit the like button on there. And subscribing to the channel would be nice as well. So you get the updates for all the other videos. Uh, but that's it here for Dreadhorde's Climb. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And I hope to see you for another video.